Midjourney is getting better and better for print on demand. And now you can create really amazing looking t-shirt designs like this one right here on the screen, which is exactly what I'll teach you in this video. So you can apply the same style to various different niches using Midjourney and Photoshop. So today we're actually going to need two different prompts because we will create two separate graphics and then combine them to make a whole. And the first prompt we want to use is forward slash imagine and then uh, this right here, which I will leave in the description down below if you just want to copy and paste it. But to briefly explain this prompt, we've got it starting off with solid black silhouette of a bear isolated on a white background. So we want to create silhouettes that are plain and simple, just, you know, black silhouette on a white background. Then we've got some adjectives to describe the style and make it as simple as possible. Simplistic, solid, minimalistic and clear outline. A very simple prompt, but oftentimes simple and short can get great results in mid journey. Feel free to swap out the word bear for different animals, for different objects, um, whatever may suit the niche that you're entering. And one thing I like to add at the end is dash dash repeat. And then let's go with seven. And that way we're going to get seven instances of the same prompt and you'll just have more options to choose from and various different images to upscale rather than just four and then having to re-roll and that sort of stuff. So wait until those are finished and then we can take a look at the best options. So here we go, we've got a bunch of results now and I typically want to look in these silhouettes for very plain options like this one right here where you don't really see eyes and nose. This is a frontal view which um, I don't think would work as well and once again right here we've got the, the mouth and the eyes pretty pronounced. So ideally you want to look for silhouettes like this. Make sure the, the animals also got four legs. Sometimes these turn out with three legs which obviously isn't too ideal. So the ones that look good enough um, and that you're happy with. You want to upscale with the U button. So I think um, option three and two look quite decent. Actually, the first one does as well. So let's go for one and three. In this case, scroll up. These aren't too great. What else have we got? We could probably make use of uh, this one as well. This one in the top right corner has got three legs. So that's that's what I meant. And um, you have to watch out and make sure the uh, anatomy is actually correct. So in this one, option three is decent. And here we've got um, another couple of good ones. So I think think that has enough options to choose from. Just wait for them to upscale. Then we can move on to the second prompt to help create the image that will actually go inside of a silhouette. So the cool thing about this strategy is that now we can use this second prompt to cross niche a certain topic with our initial silhouette from the first prompt. And you can do this um, with your own designs. Uh, this is just an example, but here I'm going to now use the bear silhouette and mix it with camping as the image. So I formed a prompt to suit this. If I type in forward slash imagine and paste this into here, and once again, this is down below in the description so you can use it yourself and amend it further. We've got a flat 2D vector illustration of a tent in front of an outdoor forest and mountain landscape, starry night sky. And then for the style, I've put artistic, digital art, colorful, earthy and nature themed. Now the aspect ratio at the end, I've changed this a little bit to make it fit the silhouette shape right here because it's quite a bit wider than it is tall. That's going to help if an image is quite close to the aspect ratio of the actual black silhouette that we've created. So bear that in mind, you might have to mess around with the aspect ratio depending on what output you had with the first prompt. But nevertheless, let's go ahead, put dash dash repeat at the end. Um, let's just go with seven again. So we get various results right here and have a lot of options to choose from. Now looking through these results, it is quite a lot of personal preference in terms of which images you like the most. But ideally, you'll want them to stretch sort of all the way to the edges right here. Um, not like this bottom right example where we've got sort of a vintage sunset feel almost. That was going to make it a lot harder in Photoshop afterwards. So you want to choose images that are a bit more full screen. So I think that the top right one looks the nicest right here, but there's various other good options. So you just want to go through these, pick a few options that you think look nice and realistic. Like this one in the bottom right doesn't look too realistic. There's this weird um, sort of rainbow, but not a rainbow shape right here. So the those ones obviously leave out, but the bottom left is definitely really nice. Um, I, I love the style of this type of graphic that comes out with the prompt. So definitely really interesting results. Once you've found a few that you're happy with, we can move on to the next step, which is downloading and vectorizing these. 
Our next step is turning the images that we download from Midjourney into Vectors so the quality actually looks good when printed. In order to do that, head to vectorizer.ai. It will be linked in the description as well. All you have to do is drag and drop your images into this. You can only do it one at a time, but there is also a bulk option with my designs, which I made a video about in the past. Make sure to check that out if you've got a lot of files to vectorize. It will save you a ton of time. It's currently free as well. So um, essentially what this does, as you can see, turn this uh, pixelated image into a smooth vector file that we can then scale to any dimension without it looking horrible. So once you've dropped your file into here, click on download. And in terms of the settings, make sure shape stacking is turned to stack shapes on top of each other. And over here with the gap filler, copy these settings as well. Clip overflow I found uh, gets some really good results um, or better looking results than a default because I think by default this is actually turned off. So uh, make sure you've got the same settings as me right here. Save it as an SVG file, which is a vector format and then hit download to download your finished file. And by the way, you also have to do this for your other images with the tent illustration because otherwise that is also going to print horribly. So now it's time to head into Photoshop or your design tool of choice where we can then combine these images and create a nice looking t-shirt design. So in this case, I'm using 4,500 pixels in width and 5,400 pixels in height as a sort of portrait format. And the background color in my case is white. Um, you can copy these settings. You don't have to exactly do the same. Other formats would also work for t-shirts, but I just like to use these because they're ideal for merch by Amazon. So the first thing you'll want to do is drag and drop the SVG file or vector of your silhouette into Photoshop. And currently this has still got a white background attached to it, as we can see, and we want to get rid of that background. And the quick way to do that, first of all, head over to the layers panel, right click onto your SVG and then click rasterize layer right here. Now we want to choose the magic wand tool. You can also hit W on your keyboard to open that and then click on the black silhouette itself. If uh, your selection doesn't look as accurate as mine, it might be because of your settings. So I've got my tolerance set to 50 and I've got contiguous enabled. So once you've got the black silhouette selected, you want to head to the layers panel again and add a layer mask with this symbol in the bottom right corner. And now as you can see, the white background disappears. It looks really, really good. Now I do tend to refine these masks a little bit because while Whilst they look good at first sight, if we look at them closely, they're not always perfect. So over here where it says refine, we can open the select and mask option. And this will quickly reveal sort of a white outline around the edge, a bit of a ghosting effect almost. And um, I want to get rid of this. So in order to take that white off, we can increase the contrast right here. And we can also turn this shift edge slider down to about 45 or 50 percent. And that is now taken that white glow away. Once you're done, hit OK in the bottom right corner and your mask has been refined. Next step is right clicking onto our mask and then hitting apply layer mask. And now we've got an independent silhouette right here that we can use in conjunction with our other image. Speaking of, let's actually drag and drop the SVG file to our camping image into Photoshop right here and place it into the document. Next up, we'll want to move it underneath the silhouette in the layers panel like so, so we can actually see what's going on a bit better and now resize the black silhouette so it covers most of the image or as much as possible. And now whilst holding down control, click on the thumbnail of the silhouette in the layers panel with your mouse and that is going to select the silhouette. Next up, you want to click on the image in the layers panel whilst your selection is still active and then add a layer mask once again. And if we now hide the silhouette itself, we can now see the bare shape with our camping image inside of it, which looks really nice in my opinion. And a quick trick as well, if you unlink the mask from the image with this little symbol right here, you can now move the image around in the background and sort of realign it because in some cases you might not see the tent very well or you might not see the moon or the mountains. So if we move this around a little bit, you can have it looking a lot better very, very quickly. So in my case, I think if we do it like 
this, then the tent stands out a lot better and we still got the entire silhouette filled out. You have to watch out in some cases, if you, if you move this around too much, you might have some parts of your silhouette cut off like so. So be aware of that little issue that can occur. But in most cases, you can make this look a lot nicer with this little trick. Next step, you want to link these again so you can move this around more easily. And we can now add some text and uh, some other little bits to make this design more interesting in the next step. So let's go ahead and select the type tool from our toolbar over here. You can also hit T on your keyboard to access that. Click anywhere on your artboard and then let's type out adventure for the top part of this design. For the font color, I'm just going to select all of this text, click into the color selection field, and then we can use the color picker to sample a color from our design. And I like to use one of the darker colors right here, such as this blue. And then we can also change the font that we're using right here to make it a bit more sort of nature bear themed in a sense the one that i like to use quite a lot recently is called minoria there we go i'll leave a link to this font in the description down below as well if any of you want to use it i'm going to increase the text quite a bit up here and then i think it would be nice to create a bit of a curved effect along the top first of all let's copy this text down because then we have an easier time adding something at the bottom but to curve this top bit of text we have to have it selected and then head over to type warp text for the style choose arc right here and let's turn the bend down to about 40%. We need to readjust the placement a bit, and move this down further so it's back on the app board. And let's go ahead and do the same for the bottom text. Let's actually put is calling right here. Adventure is calling, which suits the sort of nature camping theme design. And once again, we can go ahead and go to type warp text, use the arc style. And in this case, we want to do minus 40%. Hit OK and move this back up onto the app board. Right, and there we go. That is already a nice looking design. I do want to add a little bit to these empty areas right here, something that suits this type of design. Um, oftentimes you can add something like arrow graphics and I have got some in my free print on demand graphics bundle, which I will also link in the description. I'll find those and I'll add those arrows to this design as well. Right, here we go opened it up um, now this one is in white which you wouldn't really see up there so what i'm going to do is in the last panel right click on this arrow go to blending options enable color overlay and then we can change this make sure that the blend mode is on normal and the opacity is turned up to 100 and then we can change this color to the same one that we used for the text so this dark blue right here and now as you can see uh, we can actually place this arrow at the top with it being visible let's copy this arrow down we can duplicate it in the layers panel just hold down alt on your keyboard and then drag the freebie 18 that way it'll be duplicated then you can hit Control t on your keyboard and as you can see it will bring up the bounding box just draw this down all the way to the bottom and then you can also flip it if you want to and whilst holding down shift it will give you sort of an easier time at turning this at a proper angle that actually looks straight. So there we go. That's added some arrows there very, very quickly. And I think that is a nice looking design. You can also easily create variations of this design. You could add a stroke around the bear, like a white stroke outline, uh, change the text color to white, and then it would work on a dark t-shirt as well. You could just use the bear on its own with that camping graphic inside. That might get some people interested as well that like nature. You could also obviously change the phrase quite easily and still target people in the same exact niches once you've got this design created for one of your niches you can use it in many different ways which is really really good so it will save you time in the future as well and in case you're wondering how to export this in Photoshop, first of all, make sure to disable your background color because we do want a transparent PNG for this. Then head over to File, Export, go to Export As, make sure you've got PNG selected for the format and then click Export in the bottom right corner and save it to your device. In case you didn't know, Midjourney can also help you create really nice looking mockups and I teach you how to do that in this video right here with three advanced prompts.